Hello guys, this is Nick with Phone Arena and you're watching our video preview of the Samsung Galaxy Core. It's a lower mid-range Android smartphone offering a fairly large 4.3 inch screen. And what's also really nice about it is that it's available in both single and dual SIM versions. Further specs include a 1.2 GHz dual core processor, 5 megapixel autofocus camera and an 1800 mAh battery. So overall, the Galaxy Core doesn't really have a lot to impress with, but it's pretty affordable, so let's give it a chance. Unsurprisingly, Samsung has chosen to go with the same tried and trusted design formula, and that can be seen as either good or bad, depending on how you look at it. On one hand, we know that the Galaxy Core looks more or less just like so many other Galaxy smartphones, and it doesn't really have a lot to stand out with visually. But on the other hand, those curved corners do look nice and have a positive impact on, on ergonomics, so the Galaxy Core is comfortable to hold and operate with a single hand. The Galaxy Core is made of plastic, so it doesn't really feel premium to the touch. But we must admit that its glossy finish is not slippery and resists fingerprints well. If you're into numbers, the Galaxy Core weighs 124 grams, so it's light but average for a smartphone of this class. It has a thickness of under 9 millimeters, so it slips easily into any pocket or purse. The buttons on the Galaxy Core are arranged in a typical for Samsung manner with a physical home key in the middle, under the screen and two capacitive buttons for the menu and back functions on its sides. They're large enough and well spaced out, which makes them easy to hit and hard to press by accident. The volume rocker is on the left side of the device and the power key is on the right side. We can confirm that both these buttons are very easy to reach. The 4.3 inch display on the Samsung Galaxy Core is ok in terms of size, but nothing special when it comes to quality. It has a below average resolution of 480 by 800 pixels. And while photos and videos displayed on it look ok, small sized text can be hard to read. Colors are accurate in general, but shift towards the warm side if the screen is tilted even at a slight angle. One thing that annoys us about the Galaxy Core is that it doesn't have a light sensor. That means that it cannot set the brightness of the screen automatically, so the user has to do that manually from this slider located in the notification bar. Using the Galaxy Core outdoors can be a challenge, especially on a sunny day. That's because the surface of its screen is very reflective and that makes it very hard to see what's being displayed on it. Now let's take a closer look at the user interface on the Samsung Galaxy Core. The smartphone comes with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean out of the box, which unfortunately isn't the most recent version of Android, even though 4.2 has been out for half a year now. The user interface isn't in its latest form either. This is TouchWiz user interface by Samsung, but it's not in the form that uh, we saw on the Galaxy S4. That's not really a deal breaker, but it's something that we must point out nevertheless. The user interface has been improved in several ways. For example, now you're free to set shortcuts on your home screen and you can customize these yourself. Also, if we take a look at the notification bar, now there is a selection of toggle switches which allow you to quickly control some of the settings of the smartphone. Unfortunately, many of the fancy features that are found on higher-end Samsung Android devices have been omitted. For example, there is no S-Health, no S-Translator, no Group Play and no optical reader. The only cool perk that you get is Smart Stay, which prevents the display from turning itself off as long as you are still looking at it. We are content with the on-screen virtual keyboard on the Samsung Galaxy Core. It is accurate and its keys are well spaced out, so we can comfortably type at above average speeds even in portrait mode. There is a dual SIM version of the Samsung Galaxy Core called Samsung Galaxy Core Duos. What's cool about it is that it's a dual active smartphone. That means that even if one of the SIM cards is used during a phone call, the other one can still receive phone calls, text messages and data from your wireless carrier. The Samsung Galaxy Core ranks below the average when it comes to raw processing power. It comes with a Snapdragon S4 Play chip, which has a dual-core 1.2 GHz processor and 1 GB of RAM. That's enough power to provide a decent, passable user experience, but choppiness and slowdowns can be common, especially if there is a task running in the background. As far as gaming is concerned, you'll be able to play some basic video games, such as Angry Birds or Fruit Ninja, but more demanding titles will require more power. 
Since the Samsung Galaxy Core comes with just 8GB of onboard storage, half of which is occupied by system files, you will run out of space rather quickly. That's why we recommend you to get a microSD card to go along with this device. For the most part, browsing the web from the Samsung Galaxy Core is a smooth experience. We do notice, however, that the browser struggles with loading and rendering heavy web pages. But other than that, we have nothing to complain about. You get support for multiple windows and embedded YouTube videos as well. It's nice to see that Samsung has added the so-called reader mode, which is used to clear a web page from all unnecessary content, leaving only the body of the article and some images. There is a 5 megapixel autofocus camera on the back of the Galaxy Core, along with an LED flash, and on its front we have a 0.3 megapixel front-facing camera. The user interface is in its old form. It's pretty much the way it looked back with the Galaxy S3, but that's okay because it offers plenty of useful features. One of them is panorama mode, which stitches together several images to compose one single panoramic image. We get some filters as well and some settings, among which are a handful of shooting modes that you can experiment with depending on the lighting conditions. The good thing about the Galaxy Core and its camera is that the photos that it takes are presentable. There may be some digital noise here and there and the dynamics range could be better, but considering the price point of this device, we cannot really complain about the quality of its photos. The bad thing, however, is that the camera application is slow to boot and takes a while to focus on an object, meaning that you might miss that special moment you're trying to capture. Also, indoor photos often tend to have inaccurate colors. 720 by 480 pixels is the maximum resolution at which the Samsung Galaxy Core can capture videos. That's barely acceptable, so using the smartphone for video capturing isn't really recommended unless there is no other camera around. Unsurprisingly, the Samsung Galaxy Core comes with the same music app seen on any other Samsung Galaxy smartphone. It works as expected and has all the basic necessities such as support for album art, it has a built-in equalizer and it will list your music by artist, by song name and by album name. Also, it allows you to browse your music folder by folder. Along with that, you also get a home screen widget and controls on your notification bar. And here we have the video player on the Samsung Galaxy Core. It doesn't support DivX files and it won't run any videos with resolution higher than 800 by 480 pixels, which is a bit disappointing. Nevertheless, the screen is large enough, so it's suitable for watching a YouTube video once in a while or your favorite TV show. So we weren't really expecting any surprises out of the Samsung Galaxy Core and we didn't really get any. Most of the things about the smartphone are just okay and nothing more. We've seen the design rehashed many times already and the performance of its processor leaves something to be desired. But at the same time, if we take the price of this device into account, which ranges between $250 and $330 right now, then we think that the Galaxy Core is an okay, decent smartphone, especially if you're looking for a device that offers dual SIM, dual active functionality. Thank you for watching our video preview of the Samsung Galaxy Core. To learn more about this device, feel free to check out our website, phonearena.com.